uh, resin 3D printed designs from Noe and Pedro during this experiment where they design cool, useful things and then like we get them 3D printed and stock them. Um, so this is a little uh, switch holder for our breadboard friendly oh, SPDD switches that idea. has dots on the bottom that are compatible with brick systems <laughs> like Lego. Yeah. Brick systems. Brick systems. Brick systems. Also, we have a feather or feather wing I love holder brick systems system. Wrong, yeah, brick systems. Well, you have brick systems, you want to add feather microcontroller boards. Um, this will fit any of our kind of standard two inch by 0.9 inch, which is like 90 99% of our feathers and feather wings. But I think like the yeah. phone of feathers, the only one yeah. is longer. These are cool. Okay. Very low cost, only like a buck or two. And then, you know, you can, if you're building projects that you want to like mechanize yeah. um, Lego, but you don't want to spend money on use Mindstorms kits, and you also want to use CircuitPython or Arduino. Yeah. Make it easy. That's cool. Okay, next up, everyone has heard about this going around the interwebs. It's the Raspberry Pi AI camera. Yeah, so this is um, the new camera. It's like a little bit bigger than the standard camera. This uses, I think, was it the Sony? Yeah, the Sony IMX 500, Samsung. I think is the name yeah. of the um, camera. And it basically has built in inference engine capabilities, which means that if you don't want to use your Pi 5, if you want to do image classification recognition, and you don't want to use all of the um, processing power of the Pi 5 or Pi 4, or if you're running a Pi Zero and you're like, there's no way you're going to run TensorFlow Light on it, this camera will let you do it so you can use that processing power for rendering or like video playback or browsing or different machine learning stuff. Um, so we have this in stock. Uh, I think it works, you know, it's going to work best with a Pi 5 or Pi 4, but I think you can run it on a Pi 0 if you like. Okay, and then, you know, here's a long ways it connects up. Okay, next up. Okay, um, next up we have a digital Hall effect sensor, and um, can you click here because I cannot remember the name? Uh, Scout Makes, yeah. Scout Makes, uh, which sells like a cool FM kit and a couple of robot yeah. kits with us. Uh, they made this Hall effect sensor, I was like, that's cute, you know, I haven't, I haven't gotten around to making one. It's straightforward. You can use a Beep. stem at pH Beep. cable uh, for breadboard Boop. compatibility or your mounting capability. And then it just detects when a magnet is nearby, which is really handy because um, you can detect when a specific thing is nearby, but the orientation doesn't matter as much. And you can hide a magnet in like the object itself. Um, so often, you know, magnets and uh, read relays or magnetometers are often used for um, like detecting when something's been opened, like a, like a door or a window or a shelf, um, because uh, you have the magnets on one side and when it gets pulled away, yeah. um, the absence or appearance of the magnetic field is what sets it off. Okay. Anyways, super easy to use. Yeah, all right, start the show tonight. Besides you, Lady Ada, our customers, our team, our community, and everyone who does open source hardware. Happy Open Hardware Month. Yay, is... please join. Uh, our HSTX2 DVI adapter board. So we had the RP2350 Feather come out a couple weeks ago, and people were like, what's that thing on the end? It's an HSTX connector. And they're like, what does that connect to? And I'm like, this DVI board that I have to finish and get out. So I finished it and got it out. Um, if you have... Uh, bam. Bam. You have a Feather... RP2350, and you want to display graphics, maybe not like video, but like, you know, text or animations on a HDMI monitor or display or anything that has a DVI input, it could be a projector, it could be like a, you know, video game system, whatever. This board um, will take that connector and turn the FPC into a proper DVI port, which you can then use with HDMI. And it doesn't do audio, it just does video. But what's cool about the RP2350 is the HSTX peripheral, which is a new peripheral, it wasn't on the RP2040, lets you do um, DVI output graphics without using a second core and without using a lot of PIO. Because like, you, you know, there was a hack to use the RP2040 to generate DVI, but you had to overclock it and you had to use like all of, like you use DMA and the PIO and a second core. It was kind of, it was a lot of work. It was a little overwhelming. Um, and what's cool is now there is a thing, a little piece of silicon that does it all for you. You don't have to overclock, you don't have to use a second core, you don't have to use PIO, you can point it at the buffer and it kind of does a lot of the work for you. So in this case, is a CircuitPython demo, we are displaying 
240 by 320 pixels, 16 bit color, and they're pixel doubled. Um, and that we do that so that the output is 640 by 480, which is the minimum legal DVI HDMI resolution. Um, you can also do two 640 by 480, but you're only going to get 8 bit color or 4 bit color uh, because you just don't have enough RAM on the RP2350. Um, maybe with PS RAM, we'll be able to get more colors and higher resolution. But still, I mean, like, this is usually something is cool. which you don't need, like, a full Linux compatible board for, but now you can do it with just your Feather RP2350. So, yeah, it has level shifting, I squared C, uh, clean signals, uh, mounting pads. You just need the cable and uh, your Feather RP2350, and you're ready to go. Powerful. Disney products. Ooh.